Hello. Oh my God, <laughs> that's on the floor today. It's one of the most embarrassing experiences uh, that I've ever had. The bill is politically dead. If it does pass the House, it probably won't pass the Senate. If it does pass the Senate, the president's going to veto it, which would take a two-thirds vote to override, which the Republicans don't have. It's a gimmick. It's merely a way to give the president a hard time instead of finding a way that we can raise the revenue to help reduce the expenses uh, through cuts and through revenue. It is a gimmick that's happening. They know they can't have this become law. And what it amounts to is trying to make constitutional changes and to hold the president hostage and saying, if we allow you to increase the debt ceiling, you have to come back two and three times in a year to justify spending. Please don't think that this is going to become law. Uh, it's, I know that sooner or later, and I hope it's sooner, we will give the president the authority to increase the debt ceiling. But these political games are really painful for the people that want jobs and they don't want rhetoric. How many more? We'll do this until 6.30, okay? okay? Okay. Now, if, 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 if we hear the bells and I have to vote, uh, you know, I have to cut it short. But I'll try to keep my answers a lot shorter so that we can get the most people as we can because, Sergio, I'm really enjoying this and, it, and I'm certainly glad that you're a partner in it. I know the question, Sergio. Andrew is against trade, and I am for trade. But like, what's that? Well, I, I know you're against trade, but if you say fair trade, uh, that when I was chairman of the committee, we were a, I was able to go to Peru to make certain uh, that they had fairness in the agreement, that workers were protected, and that they were not exploited, 
And I think you might even agree that the Peru agreement has proven to be very fruitful in terms of the jobs that's created here as we remove the tariffs and allow us to, to export uh, to uh, Peru. Uh, I have to agree with you as it relates uh, to Colombia that uh, they have not sufficiently persuaded a lot of Americans uh, that they have a handle on the violence that's being committed against our labor leaders over there. And uh, I don't think you'll get any support from the Democrats as the president is trying to push all three bills. Now, let me make it clear. I think you passed over uh, the TAA, uh, which is the, 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 the temporary assistance that we give uh, to people that have been displaced uh, as a result of trade. Now, those people receive monies for retraining. They receive help so that uh, as progress moves forward, that they don't feel the economic pain of that. And so I don't know what you said, if or without, but certainly without TAA, without the, 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 the Republicans agreeing with the president and the Democratic minority in the House, providing for relief of all of these people in the treaty and not a side agreement, you don't have to worry about any of these uh, uh, trade agreements. And so I can't blanketly, with the exception of saying that, if TAA is not included in them, then you don't have to worry about my vote against them. I don't think the Colombian situation uh, can be perfected before we ask the vote. As it relates to Korea, you have to admit we opened up that uh, trade agreement after it was agreed to, and we were able, when I was chairman, to make certain that our automobiles would be allowed to be exported to Korea, that we could export the beef, and I think it goes without challenge that uh, we'll be able to get a lot of jobs out of that, and we don't find the displacement in the workers. Panama is Panama. We have to take a look and see uh, what corrections are needed there. But you can't be against somebody until you see it, and those bills are not now before the House.